Hey, good morning. It's Saturday morning on the East Coast of the United States, 8.05 a.m., September 10th, 2022. Yeah, I'm trying that new style. Well, it's not new. It's new to me. You know, where you take your shirt and you tuck it in a little bit. I don't know. Looks Maybe I don't have it right. Anyhow, I thought I'd give it a try. Wanted to wear this shirt today because this is me making it up as I go. <laughs> so um, I've got about, oh, three and a half ounces of milk in my milk frother. And I'm going to go ahead and get that going. And I'll start my coffee machine heating up. I've got aged Sumatra here. And I'm going to make a little bit of a milky coffee this morning because, you know, three ounces of milk is sort of um, a lot for an espresso, but I really like the taste of that frothed almond milk. So I'll just wait until this is uh, done. And I was going to continue on the theme that we were talking about yesterday, identifying anxiety igniting thoughts, which is from a book called Rewire Your Anxious Brain by Pittman and Carl. And I found it so helpful, and these worksheets come with it. I actually listened to the audio book, but they make the worksheets available that you can uh, print from online. So today's topic is something that I think we can all relate to, worry. So yeah, you know it's normal to worry about certain things, but it is counterproductive for you to really get into a cycle of worrying. So worry is a source of anxiety for many people and uh, it can involve images or thoughts. It's focused on problem solving designed to plan responses to expected future difficulties. Okay, now I, oh, okay, this is ready. I have talked uh, before about overthinking because you know what? Lots of times, you know, it's normal. Yes, we have to plan things out for our lives. We have to make sure that um, eventualities uh, for the future are taken care of. You know, we plan for reasonable things. I mean, like, you know, you have homeowner's insurance in case something happens, you know, that's reasonable. Are you worried something's going to happen? No. You're just making reasonable plans that have been made available to you by society that if something does happen, it will help to ease the uh, negative effects, okay? But there are some people who plan and plan and plan down to, you know, they figure out every possible scenario of what could happen, and they just sort of get stuck in circular thinking. You know, well, what if this, what if that? Let me plan for this and that. Oh no, what about this other thing? And you know what that does? A lot of the things that you're planning for are never gonna happen, or they're unlikely to happen, or they're things that you could take care of if it seems like they are going to happen. In other words, a lot of things that happen don't happen all of a sudden. Okay, another example. Something like a tornado can happen all of a sudden. I mean, it's possible, I hope this doesn't get your worry thinking going, it's possible for there to be a tornado that the weather service did not realize and could not give um, advance warning for. Well, you know what? I mean, you do whatever you can do. There's only so much you can do. You can't plan for everything. You can't you can't live your your life in a hurricane, you know, storm shelter, one of those underground things that people go into. Um, life is full of chances. So, listen to this. Let me taste my coffee first. <clears throat> Mm. 
and that's very tasty. Okay, so this is like a worry assessment, okay? So kind of keep track of how many things are describing you. I am good at imagining all kinds of things that could go wrong in a specific situation. Okay, I was mentioning overthinking. Some people do this. They imagine all kinds of things that could go wrong in a specific situation. And they think that they are being a good planner and being practical. But you know what? Sometimes you're going a little bit too far. You're overthinking it and you end up contributing to the anxiety in your life. It ignites anxious thinking. Okay, so there's a difference between reasonable planning and imagining every possibility and how you would deal with it, okay? I sometimes worry that my symptoms are the result of some medical illness that has not been diagnosed yet. Oh my gosh, do you know what? I have this happen to me, um, especially if I'm laying in bed at night or if I can't sleep or wake up in the middle of the night and maybe I feel a funny sensation, a physical sensation, and I think, oh my gosh, is, you know, am I gonna have a heart attack? Is this the beginning of whatever, you know? Um, I know I'm not the only person that thinks that way, but the thing, I'm gonna tell you what to do about all these kind of thoughts when I'm done reading, so stay with me. I know I tend to worry about trivial things. When I am busy at work or at other activities, I don't have as much anxiety. Do you know, um, I've been dealing with a kind of, a, not severe, but a pronounced anxiety for the last, I don't know, year, year and a half. And there were some mornings uh, when this first started, I would wake up and I would immediately be so anxious, I, I felt like something was terribly wrong. Um, you know, I just had this, you know, the fight or flight sort of almost like, not a panic attack, but extreme anxiety. And now when I wake up, I'm not having that sort of thing happen. What I noticed though is I was substitute teaching back then when those sort of things would happen and you know what? The whole day that I was at school, I was fine. It was just if I was alone at home and had nothing else to think about, I would start getting anxious. So if that happens to you, let me read this one again. Okay. Um, even when things, oh, here, <laughs> when I am busy at work or other activities, I don't have as much anxiety. So what does that say? That says that maybe when your mind is distracted from these vicious circles of anxious thoughts and worries and overthinking, you do better when your mind is distracted. That may be a sign that some of the causes of your anxiety, mm, maybe you're not things that need to be worried about. Here's another one. Even when things are going well, I seem to think about what could go wrong. Things are going well, but what if this or that happens? Oh, golly. You know, you've, have you ever heard the term buzz killer? <laughs> you know, some people cannot have a good time because, you know, maybe they're having a good time and then they think, oh no, but what if such and such happens? <sighs> that's like general, a general level of anxiety. I sometimes feel that if I don't worry about a specific situation, something will surely go wrong. <sighs> Even if there is a small possibility that something negative could have happened, I tend to dwell on that possibility. You know, some a lot, a lot of people actually think about, oh no, what if this happens or that happens, you know, in a negative way? I mean, is it possible to think, what if this or that happens in a positive way? It's possible to think that way. I have trouble falling asleep because of my thoughts. 
Oh my gosh, I hear so many people say that oh, I just couldn't sleep because I kept thinking about, you know, whatever was bothering them. So if you agreed with many of these statements, you have a tendency to worry. And you know what we talked about yesterday about the a weapon to use against this enemy of worry and anxiety, thought stopping. Sometimes you just need to stop thinking about something, you know? Uh, it's good when you're feeling okay to plan out things that could distract you. Um, you know, I mentioned yesterday, if you change your physical position, if you change your location, if you're inside, go outside. If you're outside, go inside. Uh, do something, get involved in something that engages your mind, you know. Uh, cook something, I don't know, play solitaire, even put on a TV show that you like that will engage your mind so you're not just grinding through all these worrying thoughts. Let's see, yesterday, what was yesterday's topic? Let me find that. Oh, pessimism. So yesterday was pessimism. Today is uh, worry. Tomorrow we're going to talk about obsessive thinking. So anyhow, um, if you do a lot of these kinds of things that I've been reading, uh, don't worry <laughs> that there's something wrong with you. Everybody has a tendency to have these kind of thoughts. And sometimes you can get into a cycle or a habit of thinking this way. So, you know, um, sometimes you can't just stop. You have to gradually get out of it by making a plan so that when certain kinds of thoughts start to overwhelm you or threaten to overwhelm you, you have a plan. Like, you know, for me, if in the evenings I'm anxious about something, I turn on Everybody Loves Raymond. I love that show. Sometimes I'll watch I Love Lucy. Um, but you know, there's all sorts of things that you can do. Oh, I'll turn on an audio book and that will engage me. Uh, I, I love murder mysteries, but the cozy mysteries, you know, um, where somebody dies, but nobody gets hurt. <laughs> and that engages my mind into somebody else's problems instead of mine. Well, anyway, I want to drink my coffee here before it gets cold. And, um, We've got a community um, healthy hour happening this morning at Good Coffee, that's G-U-D, uh, in downtown Valdosta, Georgia at 9.30. So join us. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow.